In this chapter, we will finalize our Celtic pattern displacement mask in Photoshop using a combination of brushes and the warp tool. Additionally, we will create a displacement mask for our circular jade stone settings. Finally, in 3ds Max, we will go over the edit poly edge creasing workflow and how to set up our pendant mesh topology for the most optimal sculpting in ZBrush. All right, we're back in Photoshop again. And uh, now let's just do Control V since we print screened. And basically, if you guys look at the top right hand of your keyboard, you'll see that print screen button. You can just hit that at any point and it captures whatever is on your viewport or on your computer screen. So let's go ahead and paste that because it's in our clipboard, Control V. And then now we have that uh, image in here, right? So let's do a marquee selection around this and just copy, paste. Control C, Control V, let's delete this little layer here because we don't need it. Uh, let's zoom in here a bit, press W to go to our magic wand tool. And okay, uh, Control D, we have this little kind of faded thing going on the side here, so that's causing us to select a couple things I didn't want to select. So let's Control, okay, here, cool. Now we're in pretty good shape. I think basically what I'm just trying to avoid is um, see how it's selecting some areas in here. I think we can just change the tolerance here. Let's lower it to like 10. Okay, that's pretty good. Still doing it a bit here. Let's try more like uh, one. All right, good enough. And there's a little sliver hanging out down here at the bottom. Get rid of that. I think now we're in pretty good shape. So let's just uh, rescale this as needed. I just pressed Control T to go into transform mode there. That looks about right. As I'm scaling, I hold down on the shift key so that it does it uniformly. If you don't, you know, you can do this, right? So again, just kind of like some of those controls in Max. So holding down on shift, and I think we're pretty good here. Let's, let's actually non-uniform scale it just a little bit. And let's um, check the opacity on this. And you can see the things fall in line pretty well. Um, we may need to use a warp tool just a bit. So if we come down here, edit, transform, uh, you can't see it off to the side of the screen, but there's a tool that says warp. Just click on that. And then now we can do a, a bit of distortion to make sure that this falls within the, the edge lines there. And this flows pretty nicely. So let's do that. Let's change our opacity here again. And also too, I'm just gonna make a pure black background. G, and then let's change this back as it's on that gradient tool. Now we're just on the uh, fill bucket tool. And let's zoom in here, because I want to make sure this doesn't end in this kind of funky shape that we have right now. And also too, I see we have some white around the edges. That's because of when we were selecting this earlier, it had a, a bit of an issue getting some of the stuff out that we needed. Interesting. Um, let's select that, modify, expand. Let's expand by one. Cut that, because I want to make sure we don't get like some little funky thing on the side here on top of this. So, because that little tiny strip could uh, show up. Mm, I'll undo that one. I think I'm just going to select this one by hand. Later when I'm displacing, if I'm if I have like this little line showing, it it will appear. Normally I'm able to cut all that stuff out of there pretty easily, so I think it's because I had that uh, gradient background in Max, it gave me problems when I was doing my print screen for the back there. But that's okay. Um, so anyways, let's zoom in here and let's uh, make this kind of terminate nicely. We're going to do that by uh, using our lasso tool, and this one I'm just going to use like the regular lasso tool. So just come through here and slowly kind of cut some of these out. Doesn't have to be perfect because our camera is never going to be this close to this piece, but I like to get it feeling fairly good. And this one, probably cut it right about here. And 
and then um, let's go ahead and use, press B to go to our brush mode and let's just paint this a little bit and actually let's go to our eyedropper mode here choose that back to B because I don't want this kind of feeling unnatural right here on this section where it commits I guess it'd be okay right there to have a little bit of an overlap uh, let's do it over here too And then uh, I'm press X so we can get to uh, darker mode here. And let's just kind of simulate a, a dark spot right there. It's much too dark, but whatever. <laughs> it's going to be so small in the end, it's not going to really matter. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and copy another one over here. So we're going to press V to get to this mode, and then Alt Shift, and then drag. And that just drags out a piece for us already, like a duplicate. And you can see the UVs are slightly different between both of these. So if we wanted, we could do a warp tool to move it around. But just to keep things um, moving, I'm not going to worry about it. I think that we're in fairly good shape. So I'm going to collapse these down on top of one another. And then if we show up here, black background now we have a nice uh, Celtic knot mask. So let's go ahead and save that. And this is what we're going to use in uh, ZBrush. Let's call it uh, Celtic mask I suppose. That'll be fine. And JPEG. Save that. And then the next thing that we need to do if you guys remember is um, we have these little raised bumps that come around the side here like this, so we just need to make some circles on the UVs that cover on that portion. So I remember as we were doing this, um, these top portions here I believe are the portion of the UV that's right on top of this section. Let's just confirm, we'll go back to max, and I'm going to say unhide all, no, um, this one, right click, Hide unselected. And let's just take a quick look at our UVs here to confirm and make sure that I know where the UVs are for that section. Yep, so right here, we're going to end up doing some circles that go down this section here. So let's go back to Photoshop. And we can just start drawing out some marquee selection circles. So let's change this to a circle. And then again, remember if you don't want like an oval, if you want a perfect circle, just hold down on shift. So I'm going to do that and let's make a new layer here. And make sure that white is selected, like pure white this time. I'm going to press G and then we're going to fill that. I'm going to deselect that. I'm going to go to our move mode. Let's just move this down a bit. And then shift alt drag this over because I just want a, uh, a new piece here. Shift alt drag that over. This one feels like maybe we need to scale it down a bit. The nice thing too is it's making new layers so we can scale these independently from one another. Shift alt drag. Now it's getting really small. And we could keep on going further, but I think this is probably enough. So let's go ahead and collapse those together. I'm going to shift select all those and then control E to merge those down. So now they're together. And let's put some down here too. Alt shift and drag down. And this fits almost perfectly. Uh, but let's change our marquee selection here a bit. If you select that, we can do that. Move that one. Same here. Control D to deselect. Now I'm going to merge that down. Control E. So now our layers are all together. Then if you control click this over here, this is cool. And it actually selects us automatically. So let's um, contract that selection a bit. Uh, let's say contract by 10 pixels and then control X to cut this. So now we have uh, some circles here. Let's turn on this black background so we can see what's going on. Um, let's zoom in on this just a bit. Now, it's always nice when you're doing masks or displacement and ZBrush to have it blurred just slightly on the edges. So let's go to blur 
Gaussian blur. And let's go a little bit stronger than the default value. This I think is probably about right. So now let's go ahead and save this as our, let's call it uh, gem mask. Celtic mask, and we'll call this one gem mask. Let's save that. Cool, okay, so now we have our mask that'll be ready for ZBrush, but now we need to do one more thing to prepare our uh, mesh and 3D Studio Max. I'm just gonna collapse this down. Um, so what I'm going to be doing in here is um, is I'm going to prepare our mesh so that we can uh, crease the edges here and basically get a really good result in ZBrush without our edges getting soft. So for example, let's I know this isn't really making sense. So um, if we just come in here to our front view, let's go to our edge mode. Let's select all these edges here. And we're going to select the ones down here as well. In a minute, I'm going to do a loop selection on these. Now, if we do a loop, we should have pretty much all of our edges selected here. So let's go down here to underneath Edit Edges and go to Crease and set it to 1. One is basically the maximum value you can set this to. And so now if we come in, if we were to throw a turbo smooth on top of this, you'll notice that it adds more subdivisions and smooths nicely around the edge. However, it doesn't make the edge soft. So we could even put another iteration on here. And look how nice and crisp that stays. So um, we can turn that down to one. And then if you stack another on top, well here, let me show you what happens by default. So by default, this is what would happen. If we put another one on top of here, See how soft the edge gets now? If we turn that up. This could be desirable in some cases. But for now, I'm just going to turn off um, one of the turbo smooths. And then, actually, you know what? We might as well export one of these and get it set up for ZBrush. I will keep one of these on. And that's because I just want to have more topology without the edges going soft. And I'm going to collapse that down. Collapse too. The other thing too, a lot of people like to chain for edges and do things like that, but um, in ZBrush you have to be really careful because you suddenly get a ton of really dense topology around an edge and you may not want that. And in fact, if you guys want to learn more about that, well let's do this first, let's export this. Um, export, export selected uh, to ZBrush B. Now let's save this, uh, export, yep, good to go. Uh, basically, if you want to learn the reason why it's important to maybe not ch chain for an edge like this, or if you do want to chain for and some different results you can even do if you're using Maya or other things, I do have some videos. Also on my Facebook page here, the Art of Seth Thompson Facebook, which is where you're looking at this right now, most likely. Uh, so just come under here to videos, look for more. If you come down through here, there's one uh, ZBrush mesh preparation. Uh, this tells you all about um, why you would want to set up your mesh like this and some different tricks you can do to save things. I also have a YouTube channel. Uh, if you come in here and you just type in uh, Seth Thompson channel, uh, you can find me on here. And <laughs> this one I'm not as uh, actively keeping things set up, but you can find some stuff here. So um, you could click that here as well. So ZBrush mesh preparation. In case you want to learn more, I, I recommend you check it out. It's only 13 minutes long and it'll uh, be very helpful to your workflow. So anyways, let's get that stuff over to ZBrush.